Welcome back. This is episode 83 of the Unsecurity Podcast. I'm your host this week, Brad and I. Today is June 8th, and joining me as usual is Evan Francine. Hey. How are you? Am I supposed to regale you with something? I figured I'd throw, throw a change up at you. Yeah, I don't have anything. Well, stories. Yeah, I got stories. But we'll do that when we do the catch-up, maybe. Are we All doing right. the catch-up now? Yeah, let's do the catch-up. All right. Well, I was just kind of, before we get started, you know, I decided to dig, uh, uh, what are those called? Footings for my, for a deck that my wife is making me build. Not making me, but she's coercing me. She social engineers me all the time. Yeah. Wives and kids are good at that. Yeah. So I decided I'd do, try to I'd do my footings by hand and you know, I'm a security guy and I sit on my butt all day. So that was, uh, that was interesting. I lived, I didn't think there was a moment there where I was, I didn't know if I was gonna, but I did. Well, and it was, it was nice and warm. It was like what, 90 ish, with yeah. 30 mile an hour winds all day, 25, 30 mile an hour winds sustained. It was a, it was an interesting day yesterday. Yeah, and you know, another thing I was just thinking of, uh, you know, Ryan Clotier, Cola, and Tony Alsleben, a friend of mine who's the CISO at, crap, uh, Centricare, they came over to my house oh. on Saturday. Very cool. And it rained. But then I got to thinking, you, have you been to my house? I have. It's been a while. But... Oh. You need to come play with me, Brad. That'd be fun. I can help you build your deck. I built one before. Mm, I use the auger. What you offer, man. I like doing that stuff. Yeah, I suppose you do. I got a framing nailer and everything. It's fun. I bought a new air... Uh, air, comp air compressor? Yeah. I've got the framing nailer. Mm, that's, nice. that's a whole new level of fun. Right. You just, I got a haircut. You got a haircut. Did you get a haircut? No. It's oh. just, I showered. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever eaten at um, uh, Winthrop and Rye? Is that a place by you? Oh, uh, Winchester and Rye. Yeah, that place. Yes. Very good. I, Marlos and I had dinner there yesterday. Oh, it, what'd you think? It was really good, man. I had the, uh, I don't know, some, fa <laughs> I don't think that's the name of it, but it was like the fat ass burger or something. <laughs> it was a big burger, man. I had, ate it all though. You know me. I, yeah, they had a they have a couple really good burgers. They're uh, it's like their Cajun chicken. It's like a pulled chicken with like a Cajun sauce on it, mm. and bacon and oh, it's really good too. That's cool. And their mac and cheese. The kids and Katie love their mac and cheese. That's awesome. I found a new energy drink. Oh boy. It's called Spike. Have you ever heard of this? No. <laughs> it says hardcore energy. <laughs> 350 milligrams of caffeine. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. That's, uh, that's quite per a bit. Can. Per can. This is my second can today. Oh my God. <laughs> well, I got up at like three. Well, that's, that's, uh, wow. Yeah. That's a lot of caffeine. <laughs> Yeah, it is a lot of caffeine, but you know, it gets me through the day. It gets me, uh, you know, jacked up for the podcast that we're doing right now. And tell me about your weekend. All that security stuff. Um, yeah, I got some stuff done outside on Saturday. Uh, finished mowing the yard right as the first lightning. Like I was finishing up the last strip and it was like a big bolt of lightning and the big thunderclap. I was like, well, that's good timing. On Saturday? Yeah, and those storms that rolled through Saturday were pretty gross. Yeah, um, it was cool. Yesterday, just took it a little easier. Um, we were, yeah, just played outside with the kids a little bit in the sprinkler. Um, did some, you know, painting and just clean up around the house. That's awesome, man. It's just too hot. It was, yeah, I'm, unlike you, I realized it was too hot to go outside and do manual labor. <laughs> Well, I think today after work, I think I'll uh, pour some concrete. I mean, you know, it's going to be like 95, so why not? Is that what it's, it's going to be? I think so. Why the hell do I do this? 
don't know. Days. Yeah, you, you probably didn't pick the best days to do uh, do this heavy lifting. I was looking, I think next weekend's supposed to be like 70. So I saved all my mm. outdoor stuff for next weekend. Yeah, it's supposed to be like 94 today. Next Saturday is like 76. And sunny? Yep. That's bike riding weather right there. So I will be working outside next weekend when it's like 20 degrees cooler. Did you do any, uh, you got your new uh, bicycle? Have you been biking? Yeah, we do. We're doing, um, you know, shorter, like 10 minute rides two or three times a day trying to. And that doesn't work all days. Like Mondays are pretty packed, but usually able to sneak in one or two minimum. Sometimes get three you, in. I'm going to put you down here. Oh my gosh, look at me. I hate looking at myself on these things. I, that's why I have it switched up so that I can't see myself. I just see you. Hmm. Makes it easier. Yeah, too, yeah nobody wants, I don't sun. want to look at myself. Now you can see all the sun. Yeah. Oh my God. All right. What are we talking about today? So what are we talking about today? Um, so I was looking through and read, you know, always pull up your blog and was reading your, it's about, it's information security isn't about information or security, which we've been, we've talked about for many times on this, this podcast and you've been talking about since I've been working here coming up on four years now, next month. That's crazy, man. Four years. Right? <laughs> so. I no thinking, refund. No refund on those four years, man. I'm okay with that. They're gone. Okay. Okay. Here's, here's four more and four more yeah. after that. Cool. But uh yeah so i was reading your your article or your blog post and you know it that it really kind of hit home uh you know i've had i personally have made changes i realized i had to get a new chair at home because the old one i had was causing some back issues and I'm like well yeah you got to take care of yourself and do that so with that i like i kind of it just kind of came right we've had a lot of articles written about how do we secure remote workers? How are we doing, you know, protecting the organization from these new threats? But I don't think there's been a lot of talk around how do we as, you know, leaders or as managers or whoever, even just other coworkers, how do you be aware of like when somebody's in trouble? I think your blog post really covered well, like what the threat is to information security, right? People are distracted. The threats are continuing to rise. We know that's the case. So, you know, from a security perspective, I think it's important that we are aware of this stuff and, you know, helping our employees just, you know, not, well, not just from that security perspective, but, um, you know, the reality, it's no secret InfoSec and IT struggle with stress on a, in a healthy work-life balance. We've talked about that many times before as well. There's no done for the day. You know, systems are under attack all the time. You can have an outage anytime. You're, you're never really off. Um, even if you are off, you're, there's still that, that chance. Now we've had three months of social, social distancing and quarantine. That's adding even more stress. Um, you know, the increase in cyber attacks the last three months, and as I said, if your staff is struggling and lost focus or is distracted, uh, you, the risk is increasing even more. So, uh, you know, what can we do about that? And as my disclaimer, neither of us are licensed mental health professionals. So this is just us talking as, you know, security professionals and leaders within an organization about what can we do in that role to help our help people. Um, well, that's it, man. I mean, you don't have to be a mental health, a licensed mental health professional to care about people, to love people, to, to help people. You know what I mean? I mean, it's not like I'm giving you clinical advice when I walk alongside you and, you know, when I notice that something's a little bit different, yeah. you're a little bit off. I mean, you had, like this morning, you know, I'm seeing you on this video and you look good. You look like you got some rest. But, you know, you remember like a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, you looked like you looked like you got run over, man. You were tired. You looked tired, yeah. you know. 
Yeah. And so you don't have to be a licensed healthcare professional or mental health professional to notice things and, you know, try to adjust. Yeah, I think, well, and that's it, right? I think a lot of times there's, well, there's like a stigma around mental health and talking about it. A lot of people won't do it. And I think that's the, I'm hoping that, you know, this kind of helps. This is the first step, right? Well, let's talk about it. If, you know, if you're struggling, don't hesitate to ask. And if you notice somebody is off or, or something, say something. Um, there's a couple articles in there. Uh, you know, well, so one of the things that I've noticed is it is really hard. It's a lot more difficult to do this over video than it is in person, right? Because you don't, you, you do miss some of those cues. I can only see your face. I can't see, you know, how, what your hands are doing or how you're sitting, right? Those, those cues that you would typically see if somebody's like, you know, closed off or, uh, the, you know, notice that they're, they're acting different. It's a little, it's definitely harder. So I think you have to be far more vigilant, aware, alert. Right. Yeah. You know, so there was a couple articles, uh, one from Forbes, three, si three warning signs your remote employees are starting to crack under the stress of working from home. Uh, I thought this was really interesting. Um, the warning signs are the decreased resilience. Um, you know, the, they had some really good questions in there. Uh, compared to how I felt four months ago, I find myself experiencing difficulty concentrating, loss of interest in things I used to enjoy, feeling hopeless about the future, excuse me, feeling distant or cut off from others, and feeling irritable or angry. And, are you talking about the Forbes article? Yeah, the Forbes one. And, well, and you know, so, it, oh, good. No, well, so, you know, you, the first, you know, you started off kind of re referencing um, the article last from last week and mm -hmm. where I talk about, you know, information security is not about information or security as much as it is about people. Right. And, and yep. there's, there's two areas of focus there or two angles. One perspective, well, I guess perspective. One perspective is, uh, when we get things wrong, people suffer. If nobody suffered, then nobody would care. Mm -hmm. So that just drives home the fact that this is about people. The second thing is um, people are your biggest risk, right? Computers only do what you tell them to do. They don't have moods. They don't have stress, you know, other than my damn processor gets hot as hell, but you know, but people do. Right. And when yeah. people are stressed out, when people aren't mentally in a good place, they make more mistakes. They do things they wouldn't normally do. They get unpredictable. There's all kinds of things that come from that, you know, and you'd also mentioned, you know, the fact that, you know, with, with the COVID and the lockdown and everything, you know, everybody's not everybody, but you know, lots of people, a lot more people working from home. And everybody's got advice about how to protect information at home, right? I mean, I, right. I, have, I have a Google alert. Do you ever use Google alerts? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I use Google alerts to keep up on news on certain things that I'm interested in. And one of those Google alerts is home, you know, quote home plus quote cybersecurity. Uh, right? yeah. How, yeah. How, many, how many do you get on that? All of them? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I used to get, you know, maybe cause I'm, I'm interested in people at home because people are creatures of habit. So the same good or bad habits you have at home mm -hmm. are the same things you're bringing into the workplace. Yep. And so I'd set up these Google alerts before COVID and, you know, I'd get a news article or two, maybe a week. Now I get three or four a day wow. minimum and they've all got the same, stuff. It's not crap. It's good advice, but it's the same stuff. So mm -hmm. what people are getting at home for information security is the same stuff, same stuff, right. same stuff, same stuff. So we're just beating the shit, excuse my language, beating the crap out of them mm -hmm. on this. They're already stressed out. They're already in this weird place. And then you throw, you know, the racial injustice things from, you know, yeah, that, you know, boiled over in the last couple of weeks. And man, people are just like, oh, I just want to run. And then we, and then we hit them with, 
hey, don't click on stuff. Hey, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's just like, then, oh yeah, do all these things that, yeah. I, well, and that's why I don't, I didn't want to talk about those things, right? I think we're talking, mm -hmm. I want to, that's, and I agree. I think your, your article hits it on the head and that's really kind of was like, yeah, uh, you know, so what if we tell them all this stuff, if they're not paying attention because, you know, everything else is going on and uh, look, I'll be honest, I'd be lying if I was saying I haven't been distracted. It's hard, right? Dude, I have all the time. You know, it's, and, and you've been able to get, you know, go in, but you know, it, it's really hard to, it, to balance that, right? Like I'm trying to work and do these things and my daughters want to come in and talk. And I love that. But right, you don't work, want to neglect that, right? Right. But from a work perspective, it's like, oh my gosh, guys, I, like give me 20 minutes to finish this up, right? And you feel bad for, for doing that. But when we're, you know, under deadlines at work and it's, it's definitely very stressful. And I can see where, you know, somebody who's not a security professional, who's not as you know, aware of maybe the phishing, how they could easily get distracted by a kid and click something without and be like, not, not, you know, register what they've done. You know, yeah. it's, it's really easy. So we just got to. Well, so like one of the things, you know, cause we're still pretty secure. You, me, I think a lot of people like us, even in all the stress, right? Mm -hmm. Even in all the other things, because you know you can deal, you know, deal with kids and deal with work stuff, and it does get stressful. But you know, from a an information security perspective, we're still pretty secure, right? We but still practice in what we do, right? And one of the things that Ryan likes to say is information security or cybersecurity is a life skill. Yeah. So, for, so for us, it's kind of a life skill. Yeah. You know I mean, but for lots and lots and lots of people out there, it's not. And so the things like, you know, this Forbes article is awesome. You know, and the yeah. title is three warning signs that your remote employees are starting to crack under the stress of working from home. That's awesome, man. I love the fact that you found that. And I read it and I was like, damn, that's good stuff. So here's what, so I actually did, there's a link in there for that online resiliency test. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, shockingly, it requires a, a name and an email address. So, you know, 10 minute email it was, but I actually went through and did I put it. your email address. What's that? I put your email address. Oh, th thanks. I appreciate that. No. <laughs> but I went through it and it was actually really enlightening like I had trouble answering a couple of them because I was like man these are they were really well but it came through it said above average resiliency but be careful about too much retrospection which it and then it re goes through it and I would agree with what that said and if it says if I'm if I have above average and I'm really starting to feel the stress I can't imagine you know what those some of these other some other people that maybe aren't or you'll have a lower resiliency what they're going through so you know how i love the you know right under that, that those those questions how do you feel compared to four months ago and you know even reading through that eh, i haven't really had a lot of diff difficulty concentrating isn't i'm still able to concentrate i'm just being interrupted but you know right there's a difference there okay loss of interest in things i used to enjoy well no i just can't do the things i used to enjoy <laughs> Uh, hopeless about the future? Not at all. Distance or cut off from others? Yeah. How can you not? Like, right. you know, so how, when, when you see, like it says, if you see that, how do you, how do you talk to people, right? How do you be aware of this and what can we do? Because they said, if this isn't their ingrained, if it's not a life skill, when you start having these these things come up, that's where the, that risk comes, does increase. So, you know, I think simple things like I know every time I have a call with, you know, anybody that, you know, I haven't talked to or whatever, it, I just always ask, like we get through whatever we have to and say, Hey, before we get off, how are you doing? 
-hmm. you know, anything I can do, how can, how are you, are you okay? And, you know, we do we try to do a lot of the video calls and stuff with employees and you can see, I've seen people get a little bit of like a, you can see their guard come down, right. And, and open up a little bit and it, it sucks because you can't do a lot about it, but you can be supportive and be aware. Well, and that's, I love where you're going with this because, you know, information security ends up kind of being secondary when people are suffering from all this, right? Mm -hmm. You know, the last thing I want to hear from the security person is, hey, you got mandatory training or some crap, right? Don't pile anything more on me if I'm about ready to crack and go crazy. Is Right. I, and honestly, I kind of wonder, is right now the right time to do phishing training where they're going to get sent to a warning page and education page and have them go, oh, great, I failed again. Right? If they're at the edge, is this, and we, we know you have to do it, but I don't know, maybe this isn't the right time to, like you said, add that extra piece. No. Yeah. I mean, you bring up a great point. And how do I, you know, from a security person's perspective, you know, I, some security people are better at communicating than others, you know, and if I communicate the wrong way, if I come off as, or if I have a reputation of being the no person or the, yeah, you know, the, the hard ass, right. That, right. That, that's kind of the reputation a lot have. If anything, you know, if you came to me, if I was under a lot of the stress, because I read all the articles that you wrote and or that you referenced, and if I was feeling like this and you come to me with like the if you come at me the wrong way about security stuff, I'd probably be more apt to do the opposite of what it is you're asking me because I'm pissed off. Or just shut down and not listen at all. Right. So, so it definitely changes the way we approach people, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Which I think is, is another, it brings up that point of, of communication issues from security people in general. Right? right. You know, a lot of them, and it's not, not to put them down in any way. That's just not a skill they have. And that's okay. Right. Not everybody can have every skill. That's just not realistic. Not everyone can be like us, Evan. Right. <laughs> Exceptional communicators. Right. Yeah. But well, the second, the second article you reference is, you know, what managers can do to ease workplace stress. So maybe one strategy, and I think there is no one strategy that fits for everybody in every situation, but hopefully you work in an organization where managers have closer, tighter relationships with the people that work for them. And maybe as the security person, if I have a message or I want to do training, maybe I use the managers more than I normally would. And that's yeah. probably a good thing going forward anyway, to, you know, work with the managers and say, Hey, you know, we got this security thing, blah, 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 or this new threat or whatever it is I want to communicate. Can you help me communicate or craft the message that's going to work for your team? And then let the yeah. managers at their discretion Say, you know what, Johnny is just not in a good spot right now. So I'm just going to exclude him from this messaging for now. You know what I mean? Leave yeah. it at their discretion. Make it a little more discretionary, maybe. Yeah, that's a good point, right? No, and hopefully they know, right? We have we have people that were affected and live close to the the protests and everything. Maybe you know you got to know they're stressed out because they can't literally can't leave the house. Not that they don't want to. It's it's a safety thing. Well, yeah, if you they're really want to be... that they're going to get shot or right. burned down. So, yeah, is that the, should they be included in, hey, be aware for physical security? No, probably not. That's, that's going to be the last thing on their mind. It's going to be like, you know, you got to know those people. And, and you're right. I think crafting your message correctly. Yeah. And one of the things you mentioned, you know, we're, you know, you kind of prefaced that, you know, we're not mental health professionals. But there's this thing that I've been meaning to do and I haven't gotten to it yet. And I need to do it. It's called mental health first aid. Have you ever seen this? Mm -mm. 
It's uh, if you just Google mental health first aid, or if you go to mentalhealthfirstaid.org, hmm. uh, you can get training to be a first responder, basically for mental health. Hmm. Right? It, you're still not a mental health professional, but you can learn, you know, the boundaries. You can learn to identify signs in people. You can learn, uh, you know, if your buddy calls you and says you know, dude, I'm, I'm suicidal. Right. I mean, how do you deal with that? Right. What's yeah. the last thing you want to do is push them over the edge or give them advice. That's maybe not going to be healthy for them, but then, yeah. you know, I, I don't want to overstep my bounds either. I don't want to start, you know, well, talking yeah, about something I don't know. Very good point. You know, and I think again, it's kind of breaking down some of these barriers. Like, so in, out of high school, I thought, I thought I wanted to do psychology. And so I took some classes not, I mean, not, not a whole lot, but I did, you know, multiple semesters for that and went to like a grief counselor workshop. Cause I thought that's what I wanted to do. So I can tell you that the benefits of having somebody like we've talked about of having somebody to talk to and, but also like, yeah, doing that mental health first aid, that's a great thing. Knowing how to talk to someone is, is almost as critical as, as asking, right? Because if I say, you know, hey, Evan, how are you doing? And you say, well, not so great. I'm like, okay, well, talk to you later. Well, yeah, right. And that's the Minnesota way. And you're, but what's that going to do to your health? It, well, I've just completely dismissed everything that you said or how you feel by, and it, even if it's completely unintentional, Right. So yeah, yeah, there's a lot, a lot around that. Yeah. So the next class is, you know, where we live in Bloomington, you know, next class is in Bloomington, the next adult class on June 17th. So I was thinking about taking that day off or maybe the one after that is September 24th. And then the one after that is December 8th. So I don't want to wait till December 8th. So I'm either going to do the June 17th or the September 24th. So if you and I, if you want to, come with me it's going to take we're going to have to take the day off are we allowed to do that oh yeah oh okay <laughs> absolutely <laughs> especially for something like this man i mean this is like i said i've been wanting to do this for the longest time and i uh just haven't for whatever reason you know life gets in the way and i haven't gotten around to it because how much of how much of what we do, you know, from an information security perspective, if, unless I'm an analyst, you know, like a, a pen tester, even a pen tester, I mean, how much of what we do requires social interaction, social engineering, you know, um, I've said numerous times when I've been a VC, so at, at organizations that my goal is to socially engineer this whole company you know yeah, could, that's a really good way of looking at it yeah and so if that's the piece man you can't discount where people are at mentally mm -hmm. you just can't yeah yeah i'm with you so last time we did that we did this mental we did a mental health i think episode maybe i don't know maybe 40 episodes ago i mean it was a while ago and somebody who had listened in had sent a message, you know, when I first heard, you know, the, the first part of the podcast, I was like, what the hell are these guys talking about? And then we were able to put things into context and he was like, Oh, okay. I see it now. But uh, it's the same thing. I mean, I, I wonder how many security people, you know, when they, they start hearing us talk about mental health, they're like, this isn't about information security. And it's like, well, yeah, yeah it, sure it really is. is. Well, and, and not only that, but what about your mental health? Not not just you know, the employees, but as a security person, if you're not on top of things, mm -hmm. do you miss that alert? Do you miss you know something? And then if you do and you get a, a ransomware or something, what is that going to do to you? Because you know, crap, yeah. I should have caught that. And you beat yourself up. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, my... Uh goes around. Ryan, Sel Ryan diagnosed me. And I don't know if it's true or I don't know if it's true or not. I didn't take the test, but he says I'm ADHD. <laughs> I was like, dude, whatever. 
but maybe I am. But then that would explain some things, you know, I guess. Yeah. I mean, there's some, there's benefits in, to every little, little quirk, right? Mm -hmm. But I love the fact, so, you know, three warning signs. Those are awesome warning signs. It's number one, decreased resilience. So you're not as resilient. You're no. making mistakes. Warning sign number two, your employees are making mistakes. How often, how many breaches, how many security bad events happen because an employee makes a mistake? Mm -hmm. So if you're not mentally in the right spot, not, I mean, number one is you're not mentally in the right spot. So getting help, right? Before it gets worse, before right. you get, you know, it leads to despair and God forbid suicide or something else. But from a security person's perspective, if your people aren't mentally healthy, they're making more mistakes, which means more breaches, or at least more, more, more stress for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, and the third warning sign you had is, you know, your employees language is becoming more negative and emotional. Um, yeah. And then, you know, the other one was from shrm.org, which is HR something. <laughs> uh, like, I don't get what they do. But it was, uh, what can you do to ease workplace stress? And there's a lot of pretty interesting things on there. It's, you know, unrealistic expectations, uh, excessive workloads, you know, there's not enough hours in the day to get things done. Um, you know, there's, yeah, it's, it's interesting. I thought those were both really, uh, really good. And then, okay, so that's great. We've identified somebody has a problem or is stressed out or is, is really struggling. What do we do? And, you know, I found, uh, these, there's three articles. Uh, one is we work remotely, how to keep your mental health in check when you work from home. Another one's from heart.org for stopping the stress of working at home. And then the balance careers.com of how to manage stress when you work from home. Mm -hmm. And I thought these were all really, they really hit a hit the nail on the head in terms of, I think at least personally, like reading through this and going, you know, having gone through some of it and, having worked from home in the past and how do you be successful working from home? They really did a good job of, of explaining kind of what are the, what are the, some of the struggles and how do you handle it? Um, you know, the, we work remotely, the loneliness and isolation. I, I think that that's probably going to be, I just personally from, from who I've talked to and, you know, even myself that, loneliness and isolation it's really different right, right? <clears throat> you don't realize yeah i'm an introvert i get my my energy from that but you you do I, at least i do miss actually interacting with people not over a camera right you know it it's funny how you don't realize how much of that little just the camaraderie and, and stuff i mentioned goes away right um so what that yeah, movie? what was that, that movie about? What was that movie about stress? It was uh, not Office Space or anything. it was um, the hell was his name? Uh, he was like an accountant, and you know, and he, he gets out of his car in like the middle of the highway, and he's like, "Oh, yeah," he like snaps. Um, oh gosh, I know exactly what you're talking about. That movie, <laughs> you know, it's like. It's like that, right? We, I mean, because the thing with stress, you know, because stress is just one of many mental health things, right? Or things that affect your mental health. And I know that, you know, just like stress in like a, uh, a piece of wood, right? Eventually it's going to break. Yeah. If you don't relieve the stress, it's going to break. And so your employees, if they don't, if you don't, they don't have a release, if they don't have a way to relieve the stress, they're going to break. Yeah. And when they break, what are the consequences? You know, again, putting your security hat on. I mean, uh, per, the person hat, like the, just being a person who gives a shit about, excuse my language. My God. Man, we're, we're going to get explicit for this episode. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I care about people. And if, yeah. If, let's say you don't care about people, which is just crazy. You need mental health things probably, but 
uh, you know, from a security perspective too, they're going to crack. And when they crack, what is that going to mean? Yeah. Does it, are they going to steal? You know, when they, they normally wouldn't steal from you or do something bad, will they do it now because they're just stressed and they're going to lash out? I mean, I don't know. People deal, people yeah, just crack in different ways, you know? Could, could they just be like, you know, like, I'm done. I'm done working on this. I delete it. Right. 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 It's gone. They just say, you know, you, they crack and F this and wipe out whole drive. Yeah. I mean, because you read that, that one, the second article, the SHRM, 80% of American workers are stressed by at least one thing at work, right? Mm -hmm. Four out of five are stressed by something at work. Now that's kind of somewhat, I think, normal. 33% of Americans, one third, say they typically feel stressed out during the workday. That's, again, as long as it's not like this, com this, this, thing where there's no relief right yeah uh, you know if they if they don't see the end of uh they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel you know like a lot of people were seeing for a long time with covid you know how often did you hear you know we don't know when how long this is going to last we don't know when you're going to be able to come back to the office we don't know you know so nobody could see the light at the end of the tunnel yeah yeah, you need that that hope, right? My church actually put a um, a sign in my yard, which is uh, um, it's all about hope. I can't remember what I can't remember what it says now, but it was uh, it was about hope, right? I mean, hope. It's we're, we are there is light at the end of the tunnel. None of us know when or where or what it looks like. Yeah, but you just know, right? The Spanish flu, the last pandemic we dealt with you know on any scale near this one we got through it yeah yeah and you know you mentioned that i think part of it too is you know they've got uh, that we were remotely ties together it's like the anxiety stress and pressure pressure for 24 7 right you just never had a break what's well, also also like that with the news now you just never get a break regardless of what they're talking about there is just constant bombardment and you know it's i don't think that's to see them defund the news <laughs> well it you know it's that 24 7 news cycle there's value to to the news and journalists and you know there's a lot of there can be value there there's no question right. but i think with the fact that now you have to they have the the need to have ratings and fill 24 hours a day of content it's just like over and over and over it's just it, it's there's it can't be healthy to to just be constantly hammered with with this stuff when you can't get you can't i don't think it's possible today to get news without bias right so yeah. then that just leads to more and more conflict because if i'm watching fox news and you're watching msnbc yeah well now we're diametrically opposed yeah, yeah, that's a that's a whole nother. <laughs> right, but that just adds yeah, more stress, right? Because, you know, I'm, I don't stick to any one news source, but you know, uh, and I don't, I, I honestly have disconnected from news more than I ever have. Oh, I'm, I'm with you. It's just I, when it when this first started, I couldn't get enough of like what's going on and trying to understand it, and now I'm just like I. No, I will check in the morning, make sure there's no major things going on. I'll check in the evening and that's it. I don't, I, you just have to disconnect. Right. Yeah. So, you know, all that stress, man. I mean, it's, uh, and I like your articles too. I mean, how to keep your mental health in check when you work from home. The, the best part of that one is yeah. it's okay not to be okay. Right. I mean, it, it seems so simple, but it really is a very powerful statement yeah so what does it mean when it's okay to not be okay i think i think so does it mean that it's with all the stuff going on that it's acceptable 
to not be okay and to, you know, to accept it and then get help for it, that's okay, right? It's okay yeah. to ask for help. Well, it's, it's okay to feel this way, to feel like things are out of control. You don't have to try to, mm-hmm. you know, justify it. it it's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, anyway, I thought it was really important. And, and that, that uh, how to keep your mental health has some really good uh, gifts and means on the, uh, how to keep yourself healthy. So that helps too. Gotta have, try and have some fun, right? right? Well, and truly, if you are, if your work causes you so much stress, uh, you know, I quit. Yeah. You know, and I know that might cause even more stress because now you need to figure out a way to pay your bills and everything else. But, uh, well, you you find another job. I mean, I hate seeing people suffer, man. Yeah, it's, this is, it's a, it's a very, uh, we're in a tough situation. You know, I think if you're an information security person or something, you know, I've told other security people often that if management just doesn't get it and you have crappy management that exists, right? There is crappy management. Oh yeah. Leave. Stop hitting your head against the wall and, and find executives that really will embrace information security because they are out there. I mean, we've got a huge shortage apparently. So there should be plenty of jobs. So find, find one you you're happy with. Right. Yeah. I think that's one of the, we've I talked about it where I I quit a job where it just it wasn't worth it right right and I didn't feel good about what I was doing and not you know what the company did like it just felt like I was selling out for a paycheck yeah. and it's not worth it no you know, now we have a lot of reformed people here don't we we oh have like God. like you and Oscar and well, that's the thing. And, and everybody that comes here is always like, this can't be real. This, the culture cannot Where Okay. When's it, when, when's the other shoe drop? No, but it, you know, it starts from you. You're the, you're the first reformed one, right? It, I am. You, you were like, I'm not doing this. And it's funny, you know, people gravitate to that and right. It, yeah. Every, every, every member of leadership has been in that position and is, is like, dead set against ever getting there like yeah that's if cool. that ever happened there would be a, an uprising against that person <laughs> right we're, we're like the the uh the home for misfit toys or something you know what yep. i mean yeah because we got pain man i mean you have pain from previous jobs i have pain from previous jobs and like you said most of us here you know we've got pain from those previous jobs and so we really try hard to never have that pain here you know what i mean yeah yeah and and i think it it shows in the employees uh oh my gosh i just lost the word um loyalty like that's yeah. not but yeah. you know, their commitment their dedication yeah you know and you've got you know elt that that really does look out and care for people and you know, it makes a difference. Well, it's certainly easier to do security in, a, in an environment like that, you know, in an environment where you have a culture where people do care about each other. And um, if people are stressed out, we really want to do something about it. We don't just give you lip service, you know, mm-hmm. that creates a culture where it's a more like family. And I think the people when you have a culture like that, the people want to do the right thing. Even if I'm stressed out, I'm less likely to lash out at my coworkers because they're like my brothers and sisters. Oh yeah. Well, and from the security, I'll tell you the, the amount of, Hey, I got this email or this came in that we get from the non security side of things. Yeah. We're a security company, but we still have salespeople and marketing and finance and you know, all those, the amount of like awareness mm-hmm. is incredible. And I think it goes to exactly that, right? They're, they're engaged. They, they have a feeling of ownership of the program. They, they want to be part of this and do the right thing. And when you can get your employees doing that, man, it's awesome. 
Right. Yeah, totally is. And so that's a, that's a cool thing from a CISO perspective is mm -hmm. how do you foster a culture like that? And again, if you have just crappy management, if you have a CEO or president or executives who honestly don't care about their employees and you can sort of tell those types, yeah. right? It's well, money, but it's always money before mission, not mission before money. Right. That's what I put in there with the, the cynical and cold of, yeah, if they are not happy, I can't get deliver. Well, okay. Yes. Technically that is a truth, but God, that's the wrong way to approach it. <laughs> right? Totally. And so, you know, these, these things about, you know, how do you manage stress working from home? One, you know, I think, and I, these articles are all really good, but recognize that you're going to have more stress, right? That maybe that's part of the, it's okay to be not okay. Mm -hmm. is, I mean, everything changed. It's going to take a little bit of time to, to cope with it, to, yeah. to process it, to think it all through, to get comfortable with, you know, the, everybody keeps saying the new normal, the new normal, the new normal. It's like, crap, man, I liked the old normal. I don't want a new normal. So now that I'm kind of getting force fed a new normal, it's going to take me a little while to get it to adjust to the new normal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so and that's, and that's, and that those feelings are normal. Right. And so, yeah. How do we protect people as they're dealing with this and distracted? Yeah. I think watch out for, you know, watch out yeah. for people. Yeah, well, they're the first line. So I think, you know, that's how it all ties together. How do we protect people is help them. Right. Yeah, truly, yeah, truly partner alongside them. Pay attention, show love, show caring, show compassion, show empathy. You know, just because you're not struggling doesn't mean other people aren't. And it doesn't mean that they're right and you're wrong or vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. You've got different perspectives. I live in, I mean, just take like, I mean, this whole thing kind of fits in the social injustice stuff too, right? I live in suburban Minnesota, a small town, mm -hmm. a different perspective. There are different stresses there than there is in downtown Minneapolis, right? Very much so. So some of your employees live in downtown Minneapolis. Some of your employees live in, you know, Victoria or Waconia and just because I'm not stressing doesn't mean about something and they are right. Uh, there's nothing, you don't, uh, you don't put them down. You don't say, you know, buck oh. up, you know, get, get your crap together. No, 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 no. You know, they're struggling with something. And, but that same thing kind of plays with security, right? If, if somebody clicks a link and causes damage to your company, you know, try to understand where they're coming from. Try to understand why they clicked on the link. Are they, did they just not know? Were they stressed right. out? Were they distracted? Were they, you know, it's stuff like that. I think there's so, there's such a huge need for psychology in our industry. I think we've only scratched the surface of that. Yeah, I agree. And of course, you could always use the S2 me, right? I mean, the S2 me is meant to be a non. non stress. It's an educational. Right. It's not no pressure. Nobody sees the results, but you. It's non-confrontational. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is what maybe that's what you do. Well, you that's can... one of the reasons why we created it was, you know, realizing that people care about their stuff more than they care about your stuff. I mean, the same thing like when you lend your tools to a friend, he's a good friend and he really means, or she, I suppose, really means well and doesn't intend to treat your tool like crap, but people just treat other people's stuff more like crap than their own yeah. stuff, you know? Yeah. So if you can figure out a way to truly build those good security habits on protecting my stuff, protecting my family, protecting me, and then leverage that for your own company. That's one way, and it's not the only way, but that's one way to not add more stress. Mm -hmm. Potentially. Yeah. yeah. 
I was, that was a good conversation. Hopefully Dude, yeah, I, I'm, I, I have so much, you know, I hate, I hate it, man. I hate seeing people suffer. I hate it. Well, hopefully this helps someone. I hope so. Yeah, don't, don't be afraid to, to ask for help. Don't be afraid to talk about it. You can email me directly. If you're ever like in a bad spot, I mean, email me. Yeah. No, I mean, there's, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. <laughs> what kind of yeah. jerk, what kind of jerk would say, I can't believe this person who is, you know, <laughs> what kind of asshole, excuse my language. What kind of jerk does that? I'm, I'm swearing all kinds. It's all that caffeine. No, I think it's from the security shit show too. You know, it's yeah, you not gonna, they're not going to make this one explicit. Kids don't listen to security stuff. No, no. This would be the week my daughter's listening. Come and go. I know, right? What's with Evan? He's he's a jerk. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, a couple of news stories, real quick, to wrap this up. Um, I thought this was interesting. A follow up from two weeks ago: the North Dakota contact tracing app ends data share with Foursquare. So it took you know about a week, a week or so for that to uh, push back to happen and for them to stop it. So a nice wrap up of uh, kind of closing the loop on that. Yeah, and I know these, uh, I know North Dakota really, really well. Um, you know, the state CISO, the state CIO, really good people. Uh, but there's a lot of things, in, you know, a lot of moving pieces in the state Government, oh, a lot yeah. of politics, as you would imagine. And then um, it's funny, I was the NASIO, the National Association of State CIOs. I'm on the Cybersecurity Committee. Very cool. <clears throat> yeah, and they had um, the last committee meeting was about contact tracing the apps. And, you know, um, states are considering making this almost mandatory, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have to do something like this to understand what's going on. Right. Like open things back up. And so who do you think they invited to come talk to all the state CIOs and state CISOs? Probably the guy from North Dakota. No, it was Google. Oh. <laughs> you know, the one company that I just, oh man, I just twist me up about. They say privacy, 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 but no, no, no. They have so much data and they yeah. monetize every bit of it. Yep. All right. Anyways, well, I guess it's good that North Dakota is no longer doing data sharing with Foursquare because yeah. I don't understand why Foursquare would ever need this data to begin with. Agreed. So good. There's some positive news. Uh, less positive news. <laughs> Nuclear missile contractor hacked in May's ransomware attack. <laughs> this is not ideal. Um, West Tech International confirmed it's been hacked and computers have been encrypted. The attackers are already leaking sensitive information, including payroll and emails. Uh, they're threatening to publish all files and they have a lot of uh, <laughs> sensitive information, it looks like. Well, here, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the client list for West Tech Army, Air Force, Navy, Joint Services, Joint Service Agencies, Commerce Department, Energy Department, General Services Administration, Booz Allen Hamilton, who, by the way, happens to be the largest information security consulting company on the planet, General Dynamics, Information Technology, Lockheed Martin. You would think that, I mean, I don't know, part of me, my mind is kind of going down. Do these guys do vendor risk management? Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, I mean, I, I who's mean, Alan Hamilton would probably, I don't know. Yeah. It, well, this is, this is where like, you know, CMMC versus DFARS were itself done, right? And maybe they, they just answered their uh, Exostar questionnaire and there was no validation. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's not good though, because the potentially there's a lot of uh, negative consequences that could could happen there. 
Well, these are usually, I mean, it's something like this is, it's weird because May's ransomware, I don't think it's been known to be nation state, has it? Mm, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I don't remember seeing any about that. I mean, obviously, I think, yeah, anybody could use it, but usually the nation state stuff is a little, isn't the uh, isn't out of the box type of stuff. Yeah. Oh, man. It's, yeah, th this news story should go on for a little while. So if you're into that setting up uh, Google alerts, like I, like I was talking about earlier, set one up for uh, West Tech in yeah. ransom, or ransomware and follow yeah. this story for a while. And it says, uh, the one thing I think with that is uh, they, they, West Tech provides critical support for the United States Minuteman 3 nuclear deterrent through Northrop Grumman. So, you know, what, what exactly did they find? Did they get nuclear secrets and how, <laughs> how these things work? That, that could be bad. And cool. Uh, last one is uh, Pony Final oh, Ransomware. Sorry. Oh. And if that would be the case, that would even be beyond CMMC because CMMC and DFARS is classified. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, CUI. Um, yeah. Unclassified. It's confidential whatever. unclassified information or whatever. That's there a good point. Go. Yeah. So this is even beyond that, right? Yeah, you're right. It's nuts, man. Uncool. Uh, Last one, Pony Final Ransomware targets enterprise servers, then bides its time. I thought this was an interesting one. It's very different than what we typically see. Uh, you know, Java-based ransomware. So you don't see that very often. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you, so basically they get uh, brute force attacks to get into the systems and then deploy in a VB script to run PowerShell reverse shell to perform data dumps and a remote manipulator system to bypass event logging. But it does require Java runtime environment to run. So they're either installing Java runtime or they're attacking systems that have it. And right, this is where if you don't need it, don't have it on. And then you know, things around access controls and not being able to install Yeah, at least ponies are cute. True. Yeah, threat post had this. They had a cute picture of a pony on the top. So there's that. Very cute pony. When I saw that, I was like, oh, I would yeah. click. And then you read through it, it's like, oh, oh Yeah, naughty pony. There you go. Yeah, I don't, and I don't know how widespread this is, uh, but. I I do like that they've got some indicators of compromise um, listed in there, right? So uh, MSI file looking for U UVNC install underscore install dot bat, which creates a scheduled task named Java updater and then calls run task dot bat, which runs the final payload. So you, you're out there, right? Like I shared this with our, the IR team, we'll be able to put alerts on those types of things, right? So if, if you've, they've got indicators there, this is a good example of start monitoring for this. Right. Those damn batch files, man. Those things have yeah. been on our side since the 90s. So, all right. Well, that is it. Episode 83 is a wrap. Any shout outs this week, Evan? Yeah, I'm going to give a, uh, hmm. I give a shout out to John Harmon, uh, president of FR Secure. Uh, he got me a new shirt, so thank you, John. It's not my love language gifts, but must be his. So it's a, yeah. it was a pretty sweet shirt. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, that's funny. I was going to shout out to our uh, senior management team. We had our uh, half day VTO Thursday, and you know, just it's always those are always can be very touchy, tough sit talks, tough conversations. And I, after every single one, it just reminds me how great a team it is because you come out of it feeling 
better, right? Yeah. Like we're in this together. Even if we don't necessarily see things the same way, our end goal is the same. And everybody's in lockstep on where we want to be. It's just, you know, those conversations on how do we get there that, that can get a little heated, but everybody at the end of the day, everyone's just, it, I don't know, you feel closer, like tighter with them after those things. Yeah. And from my perspective, you know, I'm proud of you guys. I'm proud of everybody here. You know what I mean? I know we, you know, it wasn't that long ago. It was only about a year and a half ago when the SMT, at least that's where the blame went. And I don't know if that's where it should have gone, but you know, remember that one month or that one quarter, oh. where, right? I don't think I can forget it. <laughs> but look at how far this team has come, right? Oh, I mean, yeah. we had to have some transition stuff, but yeah, I mean, you guys are rock solid and it just propels us for moving the mission forward, right? Yeah. So yeah. Very, very, everything I hear is like awesome. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Uh, next week is your show. And I think you're sort of itching to tell us your idea. <laughs> I, added that, I added that to your notes. I, I know. <laughs> well, I was talking to, uh, yeah, I'll be quick. I was talking to Renee Thursday. You know, Thursdays are when I have my, um, I guess, coffee with her. And uh, I want to do a series on women in information security. And I want to focus on the women in our own company. Awesome. Yeah, because I think there's a story here that I'd like to share just on how awesome it was for me to see women here uh, because of the perspectives that they brought. Right, starting with Renee, and mm -hmm. then I figured, you know, we can see if if Megan wants to join us, Lori wants to join us, yeah, maybe Jess. Yeah, Victoria would be a good one coming in, kind of as a career change. Yeah, because I, we, you know, we need more women, and we need more minorities in general, right? We need more blacks, we need more Asians, we need more, <laughs> and it's not because they're black or Asian or women. It's because they bring different perspectives. Oh, yeah. Anybody who's a big problem solver knows how important perspective is and different perspectives and creative perspectives. Um, so I think, well, I was going to run it past you. This is the first time I've talked to you about it right now. I'm in. Let's do it. Yeah. I've, I've said, I think I've said it on here. I know I've told people, like, I love having Megan kind of as, you know, that next, because she's brought things up and I'm like, I never would have even looked at it that way. See, it's the perspective, man. Yeah. Oh, it's phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely. People that, that don't focus on this are missing out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If you turn into a company of yes men where everybody's oh, the same, it, 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 that's when companies kind of, in my experience, that's the downside turn, right? You got to keep it, as diverse as possible, get as many different outlooks to get coming in. And so you keep growing and innovating and staying ahead of things. I'm hundred percent in. Yeah, that'll be fun. So I'll, I'll start putting that together and run it past you and then we'll, we'll kick it off. It'll be fun. Awesome. Great. Well, that's exciting. I'll, I mean, that'll be fun. I actually am looking forward to that. I like that idea a lot. Yeah. So now you can know why I was itching. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you to our listeners. Keep the questions and feedback coming. Send us email at unsecurity at protonmail.com. If you're the social type, socialize with us. I'm at Brad Nye. And the other dude is at Evan Francine. And lastly, be sure to follow Security Studio at Studio Security and at FR Secure at FR Secure for goodies and all kinds of other stuff. That's it. And we will talk to you next week. All right. Good show. Sure.